Okay guys, welcome back to the Rough Cuts Garage. Today we're gonna to be installing an Amsoil oil bypass filter on our first gen Cummins. So the main parts that you see here today are the uh, low flow oil bypass filter, and this is good to two microns absolute. The one over here is the high full flow, sorry, full flow oil filter, and that goes on your stock oil filter head uh, that's attached to the side of the engine. This here is an extra valve cover. That's what I'm gonna use for my oil return. Um, as you can see here, I used this, came as a pack of two, but uh, this is an aluminum bung at quarter inch MPT threads on the inside. And my buddy Wes helped me uh, weld it on to this extra valve cover that I grabbed. And you can see the important part here is that it's all flush on the inside so that it doesn't risk um, hitting the rocker for your valve or sorry for your valves um, and then this here is a quarter inch to eighth inch MPT fitting that I got from a local hydraulic store these back here are your oil feed and return lines um, I have them all at eighth inch MPT so that it'll make it easier to hook up to the stock filter head which is where I plan on having my oil feed also from Amsoil is the oil bypass filter head. This is the single remote filter head. Again, part numbers will be in the description below. And then there's two 90 uh, eighth inch MPT fittings on top of that, along with hardware to mount it. The other thing I'm going to install today is a Fumoto valve. Um, you can get these in various lengths of nipples or no nipple on it, um, if you so wish. I elected to go for the medium one so that if I want to, I can actually hook a hose up to the end of it and then just drain it right into a jug. This here is an engine flush solution, also from Amsoil. So the oil that I'm gonna be putting in today is Amsoil Signature Series 5W40 Full Synthetic. I ordered all these Amsoil parts. The oil, this filter, filter head, filter, and the um, engine flush. I ordered that all through my buddy Reg. Uh, super, slim, super slick synthetics. So without further ado, uh, let's install it on the truck. Okay, so my plan today is to move the washer fluid reservoir as far towards the firewall as possible. And then my oil bypass filter will nestle right here, clearing the wheel well with the bracket. And then my idea with the extra valve cover is to either have it in cylinder number three there so the line will run in line over here or for cooling potentially cylinder number six if my line is long enough i can come around here and up into number six one thing i made sure was that the we welded the bung high up that way it clears your fuel lines other places that you can also run your oil return is um, into your oil filler neck. Tyler Evans from Evans Garage made a video on this as well, where he mounts it into the side of the oil filler neck here. Another place you can do it is into the oil sump. The reason I'm electing to go into a valve cover is because now I have like metal on metal connections, um, which doesn't ha run the risk of stripping any threads that you might create in say some, uh, like a plastic hose like this. The first thing that I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to um, move the washer fluid reservoir as far to the firewall as possible. So we've relocated the washer fluid reservoir back. Um, the spacer actually worked pretty well on this side, just had to get a longer bolt. Uh, now we have room to place our oil bypass filter here. Here's the bracket um, that we fabbed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mount the uh, filter head to it. And then um, we'll try it out for size, see where we need to drill holes in the base of this and in the wheel well. Okay, so now I've got everything loosely mounted up to the bracket here, and then we can test for fitment. Okay. 
So one thing I'm realizing immediately is uh, I'm gonna have to relocate the daytime running light module. This, that's this module right here on the wheel well. So that's the daytime running light module. I'll, uh, I'll figure out where to put that afterward, um, but this should help. Okay, so what I've done here is I've bent up this piece of metal here to make a bracket that will go underneath this corner for the uh, filter head mounting bracket and then run along the wheel well like that and that will create um, a level platform for the filter. Right here, I mounted up the daytime running light um, box and uh, I just put one screw in because I can't get my drill in on the other side, which is fine. It's pretty solid in there. So right here, we've got the bracket with the foot and then we'll uh, set it up. And that looks like it'll be pretty good there. So we'll mark our hole. I've got one pre-drilled here and uh, two other holes pre-drilled at the back. So we'll mark them on the fender, drill our holes, and then we'll throw the bolts through. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the filter head. Oh yeah, she's solid. Now we can test fit with our filter. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our two hoses here. We've got our eighth inch MPT 90 degree fittings. So uh, we'll put one in here. Uh, we want out is the top center one. So we want that to go for the long hose. So we might actually have enough room there. If not, we've got too much room. So we might do cylinder number six. So here we have our fitting with our bung and our extra valve cover. So we'll toss that up there just to see. And then right here, we have our feed. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll pull off the valve cover, decorative cover, and then we'll pull off uh, cover number six and we'll swap it out with that valve cover. There is a gasket down here, and then there's the valve cover gasket. I'm just gonna reuse these, because um, I replaced them not too long ago. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out the inside of the new valve cover with the tapped bung, and then uh, we'll swap the gaskets over, and then uh, reseat this guy on, and then we tighten it down to 18 foot-pounds. Okay, so one thing I forgot was I got a little carried away and ahead of myself. Um, I should have warmed up the truck first, changed the oil, and then started to hook up the return line and everything. Um, I think I can still be able to do that without taking off the uh, supply side, so I could just run the truck, get it warmed up, throw in the engine flush, let that do its thing, and then I'll change the oil, swap out the filter, and then hook up the feed line.
Okay, so now I can drain the oil. There we go. Oh yeah. All right, so oil's now drained. And then we can throw on our Fomoto valve. Pull this guy off for now. And I want the tab to be pointing towards the back. So now if you wanted to get it open, you would just lift up this lever and shift it down. You could hook up a hose to this little nipple here and run it right into a drain pan or whatever you want. Um, and then it looks pretty well protected here from the front axle. And then they also come with this little plastic guard that's supposed to click on like that, just to give you that added benefit that a stick's not gonna come and tip it off and then open up your, drain your oil, you know? So comes with that clip. This is in the closed position here. All right, so the next thing we can do is disconnect the oil filter here. And I like to put mine on just hand tight. Now we can throw some Teflon tape onto our 1 8 MPT fitting. Grab our shorter hose. Now we can top up our oil bypass filter and throw that on. So the bypass filter is now on. This is going on the inside out to the valve cover. Now we just need to put the intake back on and fill the engine with oil. We've got our oil feed from the filter head with the new filter on. That's been cinched down and we come up to the inside. It says in on top of the filter head here. From the out, we've got all of our fittings tightened down to our return, which has been tightened down. The nut's been tightened down to 18 foot bounds on the valve cover and we didn't observe any leaks when we were running the engine. The Fumoto valve is now on the oil sump We've topped up, we've checked the dipstick. I think we're good to start and we'll check for leaks.
So here's a shot of the final product. We've got our massive two micron filter there mounted to the filter head and bracket that we installed on the wheel well here on the passenger side. Here's the uh, two lines, the uh, oil feed line and the oil return. We've got the feed coming out of the stock filter head there with the replacement Amsoil high flow filter. And then we've got our return that goes into a welded bung on the number six cylinder valve cover. Uh, the truck has been topped up with the 5W40 Signature Series Full Synthetic Amsoil Oil. And then we've got the Fomoto valve underneath um, for future oil changes down the road. So that sums up the installation for an Amsoil oil bypass system on a first-gen Cummins. Hope this video helps and we hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.